Hello, we're going to look at an introduction to game theory. We'll start, what is game theory? It's a way of analyzing strategic decision making between players or firms. In this video, we're going to concentrate on static games, a game played only once between two players in which the players reveal their decisions simultaneously. This is not a dynamic game where one player makes a decision and then the other player observes that decision and then responds. We're also going to assume that players have complete information about the strategies of the other players and the corresponding payoffs and profits, revenues associated with those payoffs. Uh, two key ideas that we need to be aware of here, uh, dominant strategy. Uh, this is how we're going to solve some games in this video. We're going to appeal to dominant strategy. This is a strategy that is best for a firm or player, no matter the strategy chosen by the other firm. A Nash equilibrium is a situation in which each firm is playing their best strategy given the strategy played by the other firm. So keep those two ideas in mind. So we're going to start with um, an advertising game. Um, this is uh, referred to as a normal form. This is just a method of illustrating static games showing the choices of players and the payoffs associated with those choices. So we have an advertising game. We have two firms, firm one on the left, that can decide to advertise or not advertise. Firm two on the top here can decide to advertise or not advertise its product. Again, the decisions of the firms are going to be made simultaneously. Uh, so firm one cannot see what firm two is going to do in terms of its strategy until both strategies are revealed at the same time. All right, uh, so there are basically four possibilities. Both firms could advertise, and we end up with a payoff of 10-10, where the first number refers to the firm on the left, or firm one's profits, and the second number, the number after the comma, refers to firm two's profits. So if both firms advertise, we got 10-10. If both firms do not advertise, their profits will be actually higher here, we're going to assume. Uh, firm one gets $15 a profit and firm two gets also $15 a profit. Basically the implied assumption in this game here is that advertising doesn't create up, doesn't create startup demand. Advertising just steals customers from the other firm. So if both firms advertise, they're just one advertisement ad, uh, cancels out the other ad and they're no better off. If both firms don't advertise, neither has an advantage, but they save a boatload of money not advertising, so their profits are actually higher. All right, uh, and then some other possibilities. If firm one doesn't advertise and firm two does, firm one will be at a strategic disadvantage, so its profits will only be six, while firm two will steal all of firm one's customers and get $20 of profits, and vice versa over in this row here. Um, all right. So what we're going to try to do is find dominant strategies. Uh, we're going to see if firm one has a dominant strategy. So to simplify this, we don't need the numbers for firm two. So I'm just leaving those blank. All we have to do is concentrate on the numbers for firm one to try to find its dominant strategy. And so here's the key question. Does one row dominate for firm one? That is, are both numbers in one row bigger than the corresponding numbers in the other row? And what we see here in this advertising row, 10 is bigger than, than 6, and 20 is bigger than 15. Therefore, firm 1 has a dominant strategy. Advertising will always lead to a higher payout. Regardless of what firm 2 does, firm 1 will be best by always advertising. And so that's firm one's dominant strategy. It is to advertise. All right, let's do the same thing, but this time from firm two's perspective. Uh, so to find the dominant strategy for firm two, we can ignore the numbers for firm one. So I'm leaving those blank. So the question we want to ask now, does one column dominate for firm two? That is, are both numbers in one column bigger than the corresponding numbers in the other column? And we can see that in this not advertising um, um, column here, that it is being dominated by the advertising column. So 10 is bigger than 6, 20 is bigger than 15. 
So Firm 2 has a dominant strategy. This advertising column, the numbers are across the board bigger than the numbers in the not advertising column. So regardless of Firm 1's strategy, the best thing for Firm 2 to do is to advertise. So therefore, we predict both firms will play their dominant strategy, and the outcome will end up advertise, advertise, or 10-10. This, by the way, is a Nash equilibrium. Neither firm will want to change its strategy from advertise to not advertise, given that the other firm is advertising. So for example, if we're up here, we could ask firm one, okay, you're currently advertising and firm two is currently advertising. Would you like to now not advertise? And firm one would say no. If I decided now to not advertise, my profits would fall from 10 to 6. And same thing from firm two's perspective. We could ask firm two, hey, uh, firm one's advertising. You're currently advertising. Would you like to change your strategy? And firm two would say no. If firm two changed its strategy it would move from 10 to 6. Okay, again, we're concentrating on the second number for firm 2. So its profits would fall. So therefore, this 10-10 is indeed a Nash equilibrium. I should also point out this 15-15 is not a Nash equilibrium. Uh, it doesn't satisfy that definition that uh, neither player would want to change your strategy given the choice of the uh, other player. We could ask firm 1, okay, you're currently not advertising. Firm 2 is currently not advertising. Would you like to change your strategy? And Firm 1 would say yes. If they suddenly switch from not advertising to advertising, Firm 1's profits would go from, 20, uh, from 15 to 20. Okay, would move up into this cell. And the same thing from Firm 2's perspective. So this, although it's appealing, is technically not the Nash equilibrium. The Nash equilibrium is going to be found by each player playing their dominant strategy. Now, a few other uh, passing notes here. This game is an example, or this outcome is an example of a non-cooperative or non-collusive outcome. The idea is if somehow these firms could get together and commit to not advertise, they could do collectively better. This might be referred to here as a, maybe a cartel outcome, a, a collusive outcome, where the firms are uh, going to conspire to not advertise to maximize profits. This outcome, this cartel outcome, would be more likely if this was a repeated game, that these firms would continue to have this uh, relationship period after period after period. In that, in that setting, it may be more likely that they could get together to, to collude and restrict to not advertising. Okay, I'm going to end the video here before it runs too long. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.